Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Signal Sportscast. I am the host, Marco Alvarado, and today I'll be doing a little solo dolo show with y'all. And basically, it's going to be like the last episode where we're talking about Astros baseball, Houston Rockets basketball, and yes, unfortunately, Houston Texans football. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into it. Houston Astros, man, where do we start? Solid trade deadline that they had a couple weeks ago here in the MLB. They got rid of very mediocre pitcher, in my opinion, and Jake Odorizzi and got somebody from the Atlanta Braves. It was pitcher for pitcher. And the trade that I am talking about that the Astros had did, they had gotten rid of Jake Odorizzi. And if you don't know who Jake Odorizzi is, he was with the Astros since last season. And, you know, he was basically been on this roller coaster ride with them as far as his performance. Uh, I wasn't really a big fan of his, this my opinion. But Houston Astros decided to trade Jake Odorizzi mid-game against while they were going against the Boston Red Sox the World Series champ Atlanta Braves were a team that had did this deal with the Astros so the Astros went ahead and moved Jake Odorizzi to acquire Will Smith pitcher for pitcher and yeah that's basically how that happened and also another big trade that had happened or one of the first ones that had happened actually was for Trey Mancini. And Trey Mancini is a former All Star, uh, two time All Star, I believe. He was acquired from the Baltimore Orioles and he landed here with the Astros. Uh, the Astros went ahead and traded. I think it, I, want, I want to say it was like a three team deal. It was the Astros, Rays, and Orioles. And to be honest with you, I think the Astros won this trade. If we're being 100% honest, I'm going to tell you why. Because his first three games, Mancini played in the Astros uniform. The man hit bombs. I'm talking about home runs to the Crawford boxes, home runs to the out of town scoreboard, home run. You you name it, he got it. And not only the home runs, you know, affected a lot. He also got on base, put the ball in play, which is something you want in a good ball player, especially for somebody like him. Now the big thing with me is that he is able to play in the outfield. He's also a first baseman. And if you don't know, Yuli Gurriel's contract is coming up this season. That makes me wonder. What do you do in this situation? Are you going to try to re-sign Gurriel? Or are you going to, you know, let him walk? Me, personally, I could see this as being as a keep Gurriel situation because you could play Mancini in the outfield, but you can't. I mean, it, it wouldn't hurt for having Mancini being a DH because, you know, he could play DH as well. But then again, you have Jordan Alvarez, and he's a DH. Now, I know what you're thinking. more. what about Michael Brantley? Now, Michael Brantley's out in the season with a shoulder injury. He is going to be out for the season, but his contract is up this year as well. And you got to think, how how was his performance this past season? You know, up until he got, you know, his shoulder injury. Will you let him walk and you let Trey Mancini shine in that spot? Who knows? All I know is James Click, or I don't know what you're doing, but I like what you're doing. And I really do appreciate everything. So there is that. So, this is the whole Trey Mancini detail trade. The Astros sent Jose Siri to the Rays and their 12th prospect right-hander Chase McDermott to the Orioles. So, Jose Siri to the Rays, prospect to the O's, while the Rays sent Seth Johnson to Baltimore and Jaden Murray to Houston along with Trey Mancini. So, that's how the Trey Mancini trade went. And then... To the second trade that had happened, I think it was that day, the same day, if I'm not mistaken. The Red Sox were in town, and Rastros did a trade with the Red Sox literally before the first pitch even started. I thought that was pretty, you know, pretty crazy. They got Christian Vasquez from the Ash, uh, Red Sox, I'm sorry, and that's a good bat that, they, that the Astros have, man. And you want to talk about putting the ball in play, Vasquez is hurting, was hitting a 282 with eight home runs and 42 RBIs in 84 games with the Red Sox before he got trade traded with or to the Astros. You know, unfortunately his contract expires this at the end of the season as well, but I mean, hey, with Jason Castro out of the picture for the Astros for a long time, you have to think this isn't a bad idea. Now, if you remember last episode, I had my partner Corbin Carter Dixon on here. Shout out to you, my boy. 
we talked about the possibility of Wilson Contreras coming to the Astros. And at the time, I said I, I didn't see it happening because, well, Jason Castro was playing with the Astros before he had gotten injured. But it kind of strikes the nerve with me now. Do you let Vasquez walk and you pursue Wilson Contreras? Because Martin Maldonado's contract is up at the end of this season as well. So you can there's two there's there are a couple routes of going. You can re-sign both of them, call it a day. You can bring up Corey Lee from the Sugarland Space Cowboys, who has already been made his debut already while Castro was on the 10-day IL before moving to the 60-day IL, and he was alongside Martin Maldonado. Or you don't sign any of the players that were on your team previously. You pursue Wilson Contreras alongside Corey Lee. Or Vasquez or Maldonado, whatever. So that's all the trades that has happened and that were acquired by the Astros. And looking back just from a week ago, they started off in the road with a four game road trip series against the White Sox and then a World Series rematch against the Braves. Starting off in Chicago, they lost two to four. Second game, they lost 3-4. to four. Then the third game, they won 3-2. And then the last game uh, to split the series was a win, 21-5. I want to shed light on the 21-5 a game because, uh, man, I've never seen the White Sox that depressed since the Astros knocked them out the playoffs last year. And if you're coming from Space City Sports Talk, yes, I get it. I was wrong, okay? I was wrong. I was very scared for no reason. I don't want to go through that. Whatever. It's water under the bridge. Anyways, Luis Garcia took the win. Lucas Giolito took the loss. And your homers from your beloved Houston Astros, Mancini went deep. Bregman went deep twice. And Chaz McCormick went deep. 21-5. to There was some controversy going on with the, with the series because every time Alex Bregman was on second base, they intentionally balked on the mound to get him the third now a lot of you are asking more why are they doing that well let's think about it this way apparently the astros have a reputation quote unquote for stealing signs so if you're on second base you're gonna see the catcher rely you know his hand signals to the pitcher and whatever and you're you know you're gonna tip off your team by saying hey curveball's coming whatever that's literally why they intentionally balk to get him the third so they won't do that to be honest with you i think that's childish everybody steals signs traditionally it's part of baseball and you know for them for the white Sox to do that they're really petty for that just to get their butts handed to them that game they made a statement it is what it is so that's that they split the series in chicago and then they went to atlanta to unfortunately lose that series two games to one the first night they lost two to six on the second game it was a nationally televised game on fox and they went back and forth and they ended up losing in extra innings four to five and then they won the third and final game five to four so in this week they had they host the minnesota twins and baltimore orioles and look if you're if you've been a long time astros man you know how important this minnesota twin series is carlos correa made his return back to minute Maid park on june Ju- uh, i'm sorry august 23rd and the astros took the win four to two they play two more games against the minnesota twins and then they host the baltimore orioles trey mancini's former team this week so with only a couple with about a month left in the season your current standings pretty huge for your houston astros they are currently 11 and a half games ahead of Seattle for first place, so you might as well give us the freaking AL West Division Championship. And overall, they do lead the AL with the best record. At 79 and 45, the Houston Astros have the best record in the American League. The second best is, uh, you know, you already know, the New York Yankees. They're at a 76 and 48 record. And yeah. Now, the Houston Astros did win the season series against the Yankees. They beat them twice here, and I believe twice over there in New York during that time. And, yeah, and one time over here before that. So, yeah, how you like us now, you New York? Thought that was pretty good. And, you know, your wild card standings are, you know, you're at the point of the season where you got to keep a close eye on the wild card because... If the playoffs were to start today, Astros would be having the first round bye because they would play the wild card winner because they have the best record overall. And your wild card people are Tampa Bay, Toronto, 
and Seattle. Now, Seattle and Toronto. Seattle's very familiar with the Astros. They're in the American League West alongside with the Astros, and they have start, they have they've given the Astros a couple losses this season with them. Toronto, on the other hand, same deal. I believe the, they've only beat them about three times, the Toronto Blue Jays, alongside those teams. And also, George Springer is on the Blue Jays, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Calvin Biggio, Bo Bichette. The list goes on and on. Two good teams. How Tampa Bay is in the wildcard racing, I have no clue. But, hey, it's the playoffs. You know how it is. So, if the postseason... My, uh, postseason schedule came out as well. The wild card game would be on ESPN, and that would be on 10-7. Actually, all wild cards will be played that day. The Vision Series starts on the 11th, the ALDS, and then the ALCS begins on October 18th. And then the World Series would kick off in uh, October 28th. So this should be really interesting. Really, really interesting. Really, 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 really interesting. Last night, Dustin Baker said that the team is going to go back to a five-man rotation. Uh, Justin Verlander, man, give him Cy Young. Give him the Cy Young. Astros World Series odds are looking pretty good. They're looking pretty good. That's all I'm saying. We'll see what the rest of the season holds. On to the Rockets. Your Houston Rockets will start up their season here pretty soon. Uh, in October, actually. The season will presume during the postseason for the Astros. So, you know, there's going to be a little conflict there. But at the end of the day, it's going to be a okay. So, preseason schedule. They go against the Spurs October 2nd. They go against the Raptors October 7th. October 10th, they go against the Heat. And October 14th, they go against the Pacers. That's your preseason schedule. They'll start up here pretty soon. Very, very soon. And, you know, it should be very interesting. Very, very interesting season for the team. Do I see the Rockets being very successful this season? Not really. But we shall see what this season holds. Can't really talk too much on them now. Because all of the, all they've been playing is professional amateur games. On the, you know, the city scenes and everything else. I mean, hey, look. Pro-Am is Pro-Am. NBA is NBA. Two different levels two different levels yeah they're playing but they're not playing at an nba level type of game if you know what i'm saying i do expect the rockets to not make the playoffs unfortunately i believe that we're not there right now and to be quite honest with you yeah i'm not very remorse about that so it is what it is but hey who knows maybe the, if they want to drop the whole money to be a rebuild team they could do it they have picks they have assets. I wouldn't count it out, but is it going to happen? Probably not, if we're being 100% honest here. Now, on to the lovely Texans. Oh, man. So, if you know me, you know how I feel about this team at the moment. I'm not very happy with them. I'm not. I, and I have no remorse. Actually, I do because I miss being a Texans fan. I really do. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. Until a certain somebody is out of the front office, then I will come back. But at the moment, I'm a temporary, uh, well, I'm not going to say my team. But anyways, the Houston Texans started off preseason a couple weeks ago, two weeks ago to be exact. They started against the New Orleans Saints with a game here at NRG Stadium, a.k.a. the biggest church in, Houston, in the United States. They won at the final second, 17-13. to 13. And then this past Saturday, they were at the Rams in L.A. at SoFi Stadium. And again, barely won 24-20. Now, a lot of people are saying, Texans are looking really good. They might be a dark horse. Davis Mills this, Davis Mills that. Look, it is preseason. It's preseason. This doesn't mean nothing. Even uh, you, you listen to a, nor a normal conversation on... You know, the national market, ain't nobody talking about the Texans. No one. No one's talking about the Texans. And I said it and I'm, I said it last episode, I'm going to say it again. Nobody in their right mind that is a free agent would want to come over and play for Houston. It's that simple. That's just how it is. I understand that there's a big culture change within the organization. Hey, that's fine because you're getting, you know, you got rid of Bill O'Brien. Okay. He was, you know military style type deal which isn't a problem but it, it didn't find no success in order to have success you're you have to be in balance with your team and 
to be honest with you, it was his way or no way. Now, with Lovey Smith, on the other hand, he's very more open, very more laid back. But as long as you get the job done, you get he's satisfied. Now, are the Texans going to get the job done this season? No, I don't think so. I really don't think so. Their schedule, they open up on September 11th against the Colts here in Houston. That's going to be a Liberty Whiteout game. Then they play against the Denver Broncos, the Chicago Bears, the, uh, I almost said San Diego. Wow. They play against the Los Angeles Chargers. They play, and then they come back and play against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Week six will be the bye week in week seven. Oh, man. Week seven, they go to Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas, a.k.a. the Death Star, to take on the Raiders in Vegas. Then they go against the Tennessee Titans. Then they play against the Eagles, the Giants, the Washington Commanders, the Miami Dolphins, the Cleveland Browns in Houston. Now, if you've been paying attention to the news recently, Deshaun Watson is going to serve an 11-game suspension. And after his 11-game suspension is up, he's eligible to play. And that week so happens to be the game against the Texans here in Houston. Sellout crowd, the only time this season? I think so. So, that's another game to look at. Week 14, they will be going against the Dallas Cowboys, America's team. They're going to be going against America's team uh, against them in Dallas. Then they play against the Chiefs, the Titans again, the uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, and then they end up against the Colts on the last game. Um, I don't know how to think of this team. I really don't. I feel like they're everywhere. It's a fun team to watch. Don't get me wrong, because all the you know all the young cats that are out there, hungry, trying to make a statement. Look, I have no problem with the team. With the team, and what I mean by the team is is the players. But my thing is, how can you play for somebody that has turned that organization literally upside down? It's literally his team. I I just don't get it. I really really don't. That's why I'm not here. The vice president took over the freaking team. And to be honest with you, I don't, I'm not with that. I'm not. It was his idea to trade DeAndre Hopkins. It was his idea to get rid of J.J. Watt. It was his idea to literally get rid of everybody. The Texans had a squad. It was just really unfortunate that the, t- that the coach wasn't worth anything. And look, if you knew, if you know who I am, I was a big Texans fan. I was, I was, my team, I rode with them and everything. It's just the vice president did it for me. I'm not going to support it. I, like, I'm embarrassed to wear the logo. I can't even wear their gear because I'm so embarrassed. Like, it doesn't feel good wearing the Texans logo on me knowing that the vice president is running the team. So, no. Not with it. Not with it. So, that basically wraps up this episode. Very short and sweet. Houston Astros baseball is looking pretty good right now. Can't wait for the postseason to start. The Astros have a lot of offensive weapons, defensive too. A lot of people are going to be, uh, I feel like we're going to be very laid back more because of this team and how they perform. But hopefully their bats stay consistent um, just to prepare for the postseason because that's going to be a really, really fun ride. And uh, I'm actually excited to watch the Rockets. The Rockets do look very interesting. Unfortunately, not a playoff contending team, but they're going to play good basketball it's a bunch of young cats so hopefully they all fulfill their jobs and football season's back ladies and gentlemen can't go wrong with football really really can't i'm walker alvarado and this has been the signal sportscast